Security Sector Reform, SSR, is an important factor in international programs for development assistance, security cooperation and the promotion of democracy. It is the understanding that sustainable peace, democracy and development comes from within societies and with the engagement of the population at all levels. It is the process of creating a secure environment for citizens where prosperity and democracy can grow and the rule of law is respected. It is to see the human dimension rather than to focus solely on state security. SSR enables security institutions to take effective, legitimate and democratically accountable roles in providing security for the societies they serve. To fully comprehend SSR, it is necessary to recognize the changed nature of conflict over recent years. States have failed their security obligations or actively compromised the security of their own people. Civilians have been made indiscriminate targets. Poverty has caused structural violence. Security functions are in the hands of illegitimate private institutions and conflicts have spread within and across national boundaries. This changes the security paradigm and calls for a broader security agenda, which needs to consider the well-being of the population and respect for human rights. Thus, within SSR, the concept of security encompasses the issues of human security. A security sector structure can be divided up into four distinct categories. The first category includes official security organizations such as armed forces, police services, military intelligence and customs authorities. The second category includes the administration of the security sector and oversight structures such as executive authorities, legislative bodies, parliamentary committees and ministries such as defense, interior and foreign affairs. The third category includes judicial and criminal justice authorities, such as the Justice Ministry, Prison and Prosecution Authorities. The fourth category includes non-official security organizations, such as liberation movements, guerrillas and political militias. SSR takes a holistic approach to security and the security sector. Security problems often reflect the wider structural challenges in a society and can no longer be seen as isolated from their political, economic and social context. It is central for SSR to promote the democratic principles at all levels in the security sector. Equally central is the understanding of the importance to respect human rights Local ownership is a key element and a politically sensitive process in societies where controlling security forces equals power. It is crucial to ensure commitment and ownership from the local political structure. There are no blueprints for implementing SSR and every country is seen in its own unique context. There are basic operational principles and core elements that are inevitably inherent to the reform process. Strengthening a security apparatus can in itself generate friction in a society. For instance, when forming a transparent, responsible and effective police force, an equivalent assistance to strengthen the judiciary must take place. Security sector reform must meet the different security needs of men, women, boys and girls. The integration of gender issues is also key to the effectiveness and accountability of the security sector, as well as its legitimacy. Gender mainstreamed participation strengthens local ownership. The legacy of conflict often brings oversized armed forces, a surplus of weapons, anti-personnel landmines and criminal activities. SSR in a post-conflict environment
can support the resizing of security forces and sometimes integrating former combatant fractions. This should be carried out in a sustainable, affordable and transparent fashion which promotes peace building and reconciliation. Furthermore, the creation of an independent and fair judiciary backed up by an efficient and just penal system is a fundamental step towards addressing past human rights abuses and thus reconciliation processes. SSR is fundamental for building sustainable peace and has become a priority on the global agenda. Sweden, among others in the international community, is dedicated to improve the quality and effectiveness of international conflict and crisis management, with special focus on peace operations. The establishment of the Folkebernadot Academy in 2002 reflects the Swedish commitment and support of SSR projects around the world and the important task of assisting governments through international community initiatives in peace and security.